Hello and welcome back. I'm really excited to be here with you. In this video, I'm going to share with you the top facial gua sha oils that you can or should be using for your facial gua sha or facial cupping. And make sure you stay tuned till the end because I'm going to share with you one of my favorite recipes for a gua sha blended oil. I really wanted to make this video because I see so many different facial oils out there and I see them put together as blends or used individually and they all do slightly different things. So it's important, I think, if you're going to be using an oil for your facial gua sha or your facial cupping to really understand what that oil is supposed to be doing. And it's the case that not every oil is appropriate for every different skin type. So here I'm going to start with argon oil. And as you can see, argon oil is very pale in color. You know, it's almost clear um, and it's really nice. It's not very thick. It's pretty, it's pretty viscous. This is a nice choice just by of itself. Argon oil is rich in antioxidants and fatty acids. It's very hydrating to the skin but it's not going to leave your skin greasy. It's not going to clog your pores, anything like that. So, you know, if you are someone who does maybe have a little bit more oily skin, argan oil is going to be a really nice choice for you. Argan oil also is very anti-inflammatory. So if you're prone to maybe having a little bit of irritated skin, then argan oil is really going to help calm the skin down. It's not going to, you know, cause any major rashes or breakouts. And it's really a nice overall choice. However, I should say that if you are someone who is allergic or sensitive to tree nuts or stone fruit, then argan oil is not going to be a suitable choice for you. And this is because argan oil is extracted from the seed of a stone fruit. And if you are someone who is absolutely allergic to, you know, things like almonds or walnuts, and then this is just not going Going to be a good choice. So I would steer clear of argan oil if you are allergic to tree nuts or stone fruits. You should also use caution if you're going to use argan oil with other ingredients that penetrate deeply into the skin. And this is because argan oil has such a high content of oleic acid that it's really deeply penetrating to the skin. And this is nice if you're trying to increase, you know, the hydration and the moisture balance in the skin. And this is why argan oil doesn't feel super greasy and oily on the surface. But if you're going to be using things like retinols or Retin-A, vitamin A, anything that really penetrates deeply and that can also cause irritation, then do not use argan oil with that type of product. You want to use the argan oil, make sure it's penetrated by itself, you know, and wait at least, you know, 12, 14 hours before you apply that other product, just to make sure that you're not setting yourself up for, you know, really deep irritation or inflammation on the skin. If you have an inflammatory skin condition, inflammatory acne, rosacea, eczema, psoriasis, anything like that, argan oil can make those conditions worse. And again, it's because of that deeply penetrating property that argan oil has. So steer clear of argan oil if you have an inflammatory skin condition. And in that case, you probably shouldn't be doing facial gua sha or facial cupping anyhow, because it's contraindicated for inflammatory skin conditions. So make sure you check out my other video all about facial gua sha and acne, where I really go over this topic in detail. All right, the second oil I'm going to talk about is sea buckthorn oil. And this is like your new skincare best friend. This is the oil that you didn't even know that you needed. And it's really amazing in color. It is like a super dark orange amber color and it's unmistakable. So sea buckthorn oil will always have this really dark orange tint to it. It's really nice. It's not too thick, it's not too thin. Sea buckthorn, despite its name, it actually doesn't come from the ocean at all. It comes from a plant or a shrub called the Siberian pineapple. And what happens is this tree or the shrub gets a little fruit on it and the seed inside of the fruit is what is used to extract the oil. You really want to be careful when you're purchasing sea buckthorn oil that you're getting the oil that was extracted from the seed, not from the fruit. They do really different things and we want the seed oil because that is the superior oil. Sea buckthorn oil it has a wonderful antioxidant profile. It's rich in vitamin C, A, 
beta carotene, and it's really high in all of the omega fatty acids, including omega-7, which is kind of a rare omega acid, and it's really excellent for your skin. See, buckthorn oil moisturizes while also regulating oil. So again, if you're someone who kind of has that oily skin, you don't want to be walking around with a greasy complexion, sea buckthorn oil is an excellent choice. Sea buckthorn oil also helps to improve your skin tone and it helps to fade post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So let's say you are someone who suffered from acne and you maybe have some you know, dark redness left over from the, the acne blemishes, then sea buckthorn oil is going to be an excellent choice for you. But again, as always, you don't wanna be using this technique or anything to do with gua sha or facial cupping if you still have the inflammatory acne present. So get that cleared up first and then this is gonna be a good choice for you just to help get those scars cleared out. If you're someone with dry skin, sea buckthorn oil really helps to prevent moisture loss in the skin. It really deals with the moisture balance and the moisture barrier of your skin. So it's a wonderful choice if you're someone who's always thinking that, oh man, my skin just feels kind of dry and kind of irritated, sea buckthorn oil is for you. Sea buckthorn is potentially antibacterial, antifungal, and antipsoriatic. The research is still out on that, but early research is showing that it has this really nice property that it helps to deal with bacteria, fungus, and anything that can perhaps cause a psoriatic outbreak on the skin. Sea buckthorn oil, if it doesn't do enough, it also helps to decrease the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. Again, because it's dealing with how your skin loses moisture. So it really helps to keep the moisture in your skin and it helps to build up and plump the look of the skin. Now, this might be a positive or a negative depending on your skin, but remember you know, how nice and orange this oil was. If you are someone who is very fair, like myself, this oil can potentially turn your skin like a little bit orange, a little bit of an orangish cast. And this isn't permanent, it's not staining or dyeing your skin, it's not doing anything from the inside out, but just know that if you put this oil on your face and then you do your gua sha or you do your cupping and you don't wash the oil off afterwards and you have fair skin, this may, you know, tend, it might tend to look a little orange. If you are someone who maybe you already have a little bit like an olive skin tone, then the sea buckthorn oil just might help you look like in a little bit more glowing. I've had clients who say that they really love the sea buckthorn oil because it helps make their skin just look like a little bit sun-kissed, a little bit like a natural tan. So it all just depends on the skin tone that you're starting out with, but you should know that if you're very fair, you just wanna use this sparingly and perhaps mix it with another oil, or you can just wash it off your face after you're done. Another important thing that you should know about sea buckthorn oil is that it can prolong bleeding and bruising. So if you are having an invasive procedure done, for example, like you know surgery or something like microneedling, anything that's a really invasive type of procedure, you wanna make sure that you're not using the sea buckthorn oil two weeks prior and two weeks after the procedure, just to make sure that you're giving yourself the absolute best chance at not having you know, a lot of bruising and bleeding during the procedure. All right, the next oil is rosehip seed oil. And this one, you can see it is a little bit more of an amber color than say argon oil, but it's definitely not you know, as orange as sea buckthorn oil. So this one's you know, a little bit more appropriate for all skin tones. This is like what I consider, this is like the powerhouse of my facial gua sha and facial cupping oil. Where rosehip seed oil comes from is, you know, you see a beautiful rose blooming and then the petals fall off and that's what's left over is the center of the rose and you can sort of see some little tendrils on it and inside of that becomes what's called a rose hip. It's actually like the fruit of the rose. And then once the fruit, you know, dries up, the interior portion of that is the rose hip seed so this does come from actual roses and it's just that very interior portion of the rose and that's how roses um, reproduce and propagate i love rose hip oil it's just pretty much my workhorse uh, in terms of facial gua sha and facial cupping it brightens it fights free radicals and it really helps to even and smooth out the skin tone rose hip seed oil really regenerates and it also heals the skin so for, let's say for example you have a scar on your skin that you really want to help diminish the appearance of the scar, then rosehip seed oil is 
excellent at helping to reduce that appearance, that scar. It makes it flatter, smoother, and just really helps it to blend into the rest of your skin. If you are a skincare professional and you wanna know more about how to use facial gua sha to reduce the appearance of scars, then make sure that you check out my online course where I talk all about using facial gua sha to reduce and flatten out the appearance of scars. It makes it look like they were never there. Rosehip seed oil helps with anti-aging properties. It helps to boost the elasticity of the skin and it's really high in fatty acids. So it's just gonna make your skin feel smooth and soft and very hydrated. It's just super nourishing for the skin. Rosehip seed oil also helps to boost collagen production. So this is a wonderful oil if you are working on facial gua sha or facial cupping for anti-aging properties. Rosehip seed oil works well for pretty much almost all skin types. And like I talked about before, it's really wonderful for working with scar work if, you're, if you have a scar left over and can look at the texture here again. You know, it's not too thick, it's not too thin. I would say it's a little bit thicker than the argon oil, but overall, you know, it's not gonna feel gunky or gummy or too thick on your face. It is safe for acne prone skin because it does have antimicrobial and anti-inflammatory properties. However, with all products, no matter what your skin type, if you are prone to sensitive skin or breakout, anything that a product can irritate your skin, I always recommend patch testing any new product before you put it on your face. So in order to do that, you would just take a drop or two of the oil and you can put it on the inside of your elbow or here on the inside of your wrist. And you just kind of rub it in and then you leave that in place for 24 hours. And then after 24 hours, if there is no reaction and nothing has happened, then you repeat the process again. So dab it on inside the elbow and the inside of the wrist, kind of rub it in and leave it for another 24 hours. If after this 48 hour period, you're not really seeing any irritation, reaction, itchiness, rash, something that just looks wrong, then you know that more than likely this product is going to be safe for you to put on your face. It's not going to cause an irritation or a rash. If at any point during this patch testing process, you notice that something doesn't feel right, you know, it feels red, itchy, bumps, hives, anything like that, wash the area immediately with soap and water and you know that that particular product is probably not going to be a good fit for your skin. So I always recommend that pretty much anyone does a patch test, especially before you're trying a new product. Maybe you're not familiar with an oil, maybe you've never tried it before. You wanna make certain that this is not going to, you know, give you a widespread rash on your face. So, you know, always protect, always protect and look out for your skin. Final oil that I will be going over in this video is carrot seed oil. And carrot seed oil, you can see it's not as dark as rosehip seed oil. Um, it's a little bit, you know, in terms of the color, it's a little bit between the um, argon oil and the rosehip seed oil. And if you smell it, it has like a really unmistakable smell to it. It smells, you know, almost like aromatic or just like a little bit medicinal and not in a bad way, but you know, you know that you have actual carrot seed oil on your hands because it does have like a pretty a particular smell to it. Carrot seed oil, just like carrots, like if you eat a carrot, a nice orange carrot, and it's really good for your body, putting carrot seed oil on your skin is really good for your skin because carrot seed oil is really high in antioxidants. And it's not a surprise because it comes from carrots, which are really high in antioxidants. Carrot seed oil is wonderful for promoting cell turnover as well as cellular regeneration. So if you're someone who's you know kind of prone to some like dull, just depressed, looking skin, you know, skin just looks like it really needs like a nice refresh, then carrot seed oil can really help with the cellular turnover, you know, just giving you like a nice, bright, glowing complexion. Because it has this property where it helps with cellular turnover and regeneration, carrot seed oil also really helps to brighten and enliven the skin. So your skin, when you use carrot seed oil, just really looks nice, glowing like a light bulb just you know bright and shiny and very even and also because it has such a high antioxidant profile then carrot seed oil reduces inflammation now i know that there is a vicious rumor going around out there that carrot seed oil can be used as a natural form of sunscreen by itself scientific research does not support that there's a little bit of evidence that it does help in a small way block some uvb rays but it definitely is not a full spectrum, full profile sunblock. I will caution you and urge you here 
that you do not want to just put on carrot seed oil and go out in the sun. It is not going to be an actual sunscreen. Another thing you should know about carrot seed oil is that it can irritate sensitive skin. So again, if you've tried the patch test and things just don't go well, carrot seed oil is not for you. If you're someone who's maybe tried the patch test and things go okay, then you know just might want to put it on a small portion of your face first if you are you know, kind of prone to sensitive, easily irritated skin. And this is because carrot seed oil does have that really high antioxidant profile to it. Because carrot seed oil does have a really high profile of vitamin A, you do not want to use carrot seed oil along with a retinol. If you're someone who's using a retinol or perhaps a retin-A, a retinoid, then you really want to be cautious about your carrot seed oil. You may just want to skip it altogether or maybe alternate the days that you use it. You absolutely do not want to put on your carrot seed oil and then put on your retinol along with it because it's just going to be way too penetrating to the skin and that's just way too much vitamin A. It can really cause a lot of irritation and sensitivity in the skin. And the final caution about carrot seed oil is that if you are pregnant or breastfeeding, unfortunately carrot seed oil is not indicated for pregnancy or breastfeeding. And this is because carrot seed oil does have that really high vitamin A content to it, which is great in terms of being a nice antioxidant for your skin. But if you're pregnant or breastfeeding, you know that vitamin A, too much of it is no good. So just avoid the carrot seed oil altogether if you are pregnant or breastfeeding. All right, so now we come to the portion of the video where I'm going to share with you my favorite recipe for a gua sha oil blend. I'm going to start out here with with the with the rosehip seed oil and I'm making this this oil for myself if I were making a blend for clients or something to use you know, in the clinic I would maybe tweak this a little bit but I'm gonna start out with the rosehip seed oil and what I'll do this is a two ounce dropper bottle and I'm just gonna go ahead and fill this dropper bottle about three quarters of the way up with the rosehip seed oil <music> There we go. So we have about three quarters of the way full of the rosehip seed oil. And since I told you about how amazing sea buckthorn oil is, I am going to put two dropper fulls of the sea buckthorn oil into here. So it's two big dropper fulls. And again, my skin is very fair and I don't really want to be super orange when I'm using this. So two dropper fulls is completely adequate for my skin tone and coloring. If you maybe you know are not as fair as me or you kind of wanting a little bit more of a glow, then you can maybe add in, you know, up to like five or six droppers of the sea buckthorn oil into your blend here. All right, the next thing I'm going to add is the argon oil. I am not allergic to tree nuts and I don't have sensitive skin and I really like that argan oil, you know, just kind of penetrates nicely and it doesn't make me feel greasy. So here I'm going to add several dropperfuls of this. All right, so that was about 10 dropperfuls of the argan oil. And we're almost up to the top here. I don't like to go up, you know, the shoulder of the bottle, this round portion of the bottle. I really don't like to fill my oils all the way up to the neck of the bottle because, you know, I wanna leave room for my dropper. I wanna leave room to like shake the oil around. So, you know, just be cautious that you're not overfilling your little bottle here. And the final thing that I'm going to add is sandalwood oil. And I've talked about sandalwood oil extensively in a whole other video and how your skin can actually smell sandalwood oil and why this is really important in healing and protecting the health of your skin. So in here, we'll go about 10 drops of the sandalwood oil. So there I have my finished oil. I'll give it a nice shake and you can see it's turned out this nice golden color here. And then, you know, it will look, you know, kind of glowing whenever I use it on my skin, but this will penetrate nicely and it's not going to make me look, you know, too orange or too weird. It's just kind of a nice glow overall. It's such a wonderful thing to use with facial gua sha. I really hope that you enjoy this video and that it was helpful and informative. I've put a link to everything I've talked about here in the description, as well as a link to my Amazon storefront where you can shop all of my collections of facial gua sha oils. Leave me a note in the comment. Let me know which oils you'd like to see me talk about in a future video, or let me know which oils are your favorite to use with facial gua sha. Thank you so much for being here with me. I'll see you next time.